Hey there! Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. Hi! Today in my bench I have this Sony radio cassette recorder. The model number of this unit it is as you can see it is a CFM-135 S. Now the owner of this unit he use it uh, most of the time as radio it doesn't even play uh, cassette on it like all people in modern uh, in these modern days uh, and the other day as he described it he tried to use it and it didn't work so today we are going to test it and see what's wrong with it and we will see if I can fix it or not now fixing this kind of uh, unit it is no uh, not a huge deal to me, but yeah, you will never know what kind of uh, uh, problems uh, it is existed in it. So without uh, making any kind of assumptions, let's uh, test it and we will see what happens. First thing first, if I take a, a, after close inspection, you can see that the door, uh, it doesn't close really right so yeah and in here you can almost uh, see that the one of the hinges of the door it is either broken or it is not engaging really well so let's uh, open the door of the cassette and we will see how or what is wrong with it as we can see the door open and as I expect the hinge it is not engaging really well so either there is a problem in the hinge itself no actually the problem it is not in the hinge of the door I believe it is in the in the hinge holder so yeah anyway let me leave the door in its place and grab my uh, test power cable or bring the uh, power cable for this unit and plug it in and we will see if it is going to turn on or not so let me pause this video and bring the power cord that it is suitable for supplying this uh, unit with power so here is the correct power cable for this model or to this unit and let me plug it in here you go let me connect it here you go go it's been connected and as we can see now we can turn it on usually this is radio nothing so it is do dead as a doornail before I turn it down or tear it down let me connect uh, and test the uh, power cable and see if it is uh, working or not so let me unplug it and bring my trusty video M and here you go I'm going to connect one here you go okay Another one, let me remove this, and here you go. Now we are testing the power cable and see if it is working or not. So this side it is working, the other one, 
it is so there is a problem in the power cord obviously but it is still conducting electricity so the problem it is not in the power cord anyway let's test the transformer in this unit nothing so I believe there is a problem in the transformer of this unit so this unit needed to be disassembled and we will see what is wrong with it when we open it now this unit as you can see if I turn it around and zoom in a little bit you can see that it is Sony and the model number it is CFM-135S radio cassette unit it is designed to run at 110 200 uh, 120 220 uh, 240 AC uh, power uh, grid voltage and it is 50 to 60 Hertz and it operate on a batteries 6 volt flashlight batteries the D size so yeah here is the voltage selector as you can see 220 110 and yeah so let me remove the power oh my god you can see the rust on the spring on the battery spring this one it is fine but this one it is he had it so yeah so without further ado let me pause this video and remove the uh, the screws that hold the uh, the body of the uh, tape unit or the unit together and we will see the inside of this unit so here is the screws that hold the the two parts of the enclosure has been removed and there is four screws two from this side and two from this side and there is one it is hitting uh, behind the telescopic antenna so yeah let me put the telescopic antenna back into its hinge and remove the volume key uh, handle and let me pull this out this is the for the fine tuning now this type of unit I believe it is not a Japanese from the build quality but we will see after I remove and open the two uh, cover and separate the two covers because previously uh, when I posted the video about the uh, Panasonic I said it was Chinese but to my surprise when I open it it was an original Panasonic Japanese radio but this I believe and I can guarantee that it is Chinese First of all, because of the, the way it is built, but don't take my word for it. Let me uh, open it and we will see the inside of this unit. Now, the way to open this kind of unit, first of all, you need to open the door, the tape recorder door, and you need to try to pry open the enclosure anyway here you go let me try to open it without breaking it here you go and here we go it is stuck in here 
Anyway, as you can see, wow, the build quality in this, it is really good. It is not cheap. So let me try to unplug this from its place. And here we go. Okay. There is probably a hinge is hidden in here. From the build quality, as you can see, it is built and assembled really well, but the cabinet, it is not like the original Japanese. The speaker, it is Sanwa, or uh, sorry, Sanyo, and this is a really good type of speaker, but the enclosure, it is Chinese. Why I'm saying it is a Chinese because of the molding. In original Chinese uh, uh, or in original Japanese unit, you don't see this kind of molding. You can you see a better kind of molding, but this, yeah. Let me take a look at the hinge, at the hinge of the uh, tape recorder door, and we will see why it is not held to its right position as I expected the hinge it is broken not the door hinge but the body uh, the body shaft that the hinge it is supposed to be engaged in it so yeah it is really clear it should be a stud or maybe a shaft that the hinge should be engaged in it but it is broken this is such a typical assembly of low end chinese unit or low end chinese bodies but however the build quality it is really good it is not bad i really like it The type of screws, it is Chinese, it is not Japanese. As you can see, this is the type of screws that it is Japanese. You can see the head of the screw itself and the way they assemble it. But the others, and this is, I believe, this is the first time that this unit has been open because the screw, uh, the screws was uh, tightened all, all the way, like factory. So, yeah. I believe this is the original screws and yes it is the original screws because all of the unit has the, the same kind of screw heads and this is Chinese as you can see so yeah let me put the screw back into its position and put it aside and put this aside we will take a look at it later and take a look at the unit itself and see how it is assembled as you can see in here in a previous video that I uh, taught a Teco man uh, or Tecmon whatever you, uh, his name was how to repair one of these and he never ever said thank you uh, I tear down one of these and I show you how it is uh, uh, you can fix one of these and yeah this is the type of Chinese mechanic low kind low cost Chinese mechanic but it is in this case it is not 
uh, half automatic this is a full automatic so whoever watch this let me pause this video a little bit sorry about that I had a phone call so yeah uh, anyway what I was saying I lost my train of thought hey yeah uh, I was uh, talking about the mechanic and this is a fully mechanic automatic fully automatic so what do I mean by that a quick uh, uh, review about my uh, last video uh, if you uh, was playing a tape and uh, the tape reach an end it will automatically stop uh, a playing and it will automatically disengage the uh, the locking mechanism that holds the button into its place and also uh, in in case of forward and reverse so yes yeah, this is a really type of good mechanic taking a look at the belts if we the belt looks fine so yeah the there is a fuse in here but this fuse looks okay and there is a main fuse so this is really really good construction I really like this but you can see that there is a huge amount of dust and dirt that it is uh, filled in this unit so I'm going to clean this but first let me inspect the other part of the unit as you can see in here all of the component looks Japanese but the build quality it is not because uh, the type of PC board and the molding I believe this is a Japanese Sony uh, Japanese uh, uh, designed but the assembly and the build it is made in China so this is probably in the mid of the 90s or a, a end of the 80s when they decided to uh, assemble and try to assemble uh, all of their uh, design or all of their products in China. They started in China. Taking a look at in here, you can see how sloppy it is the assembly. First of all, the jumper wires, it is all bent over. This is doesn't uh, pose any kind of threat, but this, yeah, you can see that it is almost touch. There is a physical uh, touch uh, and the physical short between the uh, this IF can and this jumper over here. So, yeah. So, I believe this unit it is a really in a really good con uh, condition, and I really like the the these type of uh, uh, very cap or variable capacitors. These type of variable uh, variable capacitors they are really good, not like the low end Chinese devices. So yeah, this is a really high quality. I believe it is Mitsumi. Or Matsushita I'm not quite sure about the brand uh, making but yeah boy this unit it is dirty this is the LA 1260 this is uh, Sanwa all in all this unit it is a really really nice build and a really like uh, I li really like the build quality of it. Uh, regardless if it is Chinese, and there is a lot of uh, signs that confirm the Chinese the molding the way that the uh, PC board it is uh, made and the way the writing it is made and yeah what is this fell with you can see that there is a huge number of stuff it is keep falling and here is the 
the little hinge shaft that it is broken so yeah let me take a look at this fuse over here and we will see that this is an 80 milliamp so I believe this is the main fuse the transformer main fuse so how do I open it oh there is a little bit little hinges so let me pause this video and try to remove this cover and we will take a look at the fuse so it didn't take too much time to remove the cover as you can see it is held in uh, into the PC board by these clips over here all these hinges so all you have to do to remove the cover of the uh, the protective cover of the fuse you need just to with a uh, screwdriver or maybe a tweezer just to uh, bend this attachment over here or this clip over here and you can easily remove it I don't know if you can see it but there is the main fuse it is blown so yeah so let me confirm and see if the main fuse it is blown and if this camera will just focus you can really see that it is blown so yeah I believe we found the uh, the problem why it is not uh, working uh, when I uh, plug it in or when the owner it is plugged in to the wall socket the main fuse it is blown now in order to uh, blow to get a blown fuse like this either you have a power surge uh, uh, that it's exceed the limit or you have a short in some uh, where in the circuit so yeah let me pause this video and test it and we will see if this thing will work or not and yes the fuse it was blown and I tested the circuit using the VOM and there is nothing appeared to be shorted and the way to test the fuse using a VOM is like so you need to set the uh, VOM to the times one and shorten the test probes like this and you need to insert the, sweet, uh, the fuse in this way to so connect one probe of the VOM to a one lead of the fuse and the other one to the next one as you can see it is shows open so I went to my stack and of the fuses and I got this it is a 80 ohm uh, or 80 uh, milliamp it is the same rating like the uh, old one and let's test it as you can see yeah so anyway I believe there is no problem in this uh, unit and I believe this unit it is going to work so without further ado let me plug in the fuse to its place and boy is this thing there you go and let's test the the transformer now as you can see there is continuity on the uh, AC plug so I believe the transformer it is working now so let me connect pause this video at first because I don't want to make this video a long a long one and connect some power and connect the speaker and we will turn it on for the first time and see how it is going to work so I connected the speaker uh, plug to its place and I already connected them some power to the uh, AC power uh, plug and I'm going to connect it and I 
connected the AC power uh, cord through my voltage limiter. So if anything happen, it should not blow to my face. And to my surprise, there is no dangerous load. So I believe my assumption it is right. The only problem in this unit it is the main power fuse. So let me turn down the volume. We have a problem in the volume key. Yeah. There's some dirt. And here is the FM. So the FM, it is working right. Let's try the AM. There is no uh, station, it is left broadcasting on AM, but yeah. So it is. Uh, Yeah. So the radio it is appears to be working. So let's now try the cassette player. As I expected the uh, the belts in this unit they are working and working really well. Now I'm going to show you what do I mean when it is automatic. So, as you can see, this is automatic. And now in reverse, as you can see, it shut it down, shut down automatically. And in forward, as you can see, it shut down the automatic, it is automatically shut down. This is one of the good things about this model. I really like the automatic over the half automatic because the automatic it is uh, uh, protect the uh, the mechanism uh, really well vice the uh, the half automatic it doesn't so yeah so what i'm going to do with this next I'm going to pause this video and try to clean uh, the volume key and clean the entire assembly and address the issue with the broken shaft of the uh, door hinges or the door hinge and we will see what I will come up with. So here is the complete unit has been cleaned and I connected the speaker in order so I can test the volume and it turns out that the volume it cleaned up really well using some uh, cleaning agent like this but uh, spray cleaning agent but however there is a problem in the plastic shaft of the uh, control arm of the volume so when it you rotate the volume to the uh, to the maximum the contact uh, it doesn't even connect with the ground of the uh, terminals of the uh, uh, of the volume part itself because these how they are uh, uh, arranged and how they are assembled this one it is ground this one it is signal uh, output to the amplifier and this is the uh, signal uh, to the uh, volume pot so when you rotate it to this uh, it somehow uh, over the wear and tear uh, of the uh, control arm uh, the stop it is uh, uh, erased so when you are uh, uh, trying to mute the volume it uh, disconnects there is no solution to this. The only solution is to uh, replace the volume key. But as long I believe it is still controlling 
I believe there is no uh, a huge deal of leaving it as it is. When it break and it failed completely, I will have to replace it. So, but there is no reason now to replace it. So yeah, uh, that has been said, and I'm uh, just uh, show uh, going to show you that I already connected it to the uh, battery because I don't have a D si uh, size batteries. I use a six volt. Uh, in order so I can feed power to this unit and as you can see it is working like a charm so now the AC it is working and the DC it is working so let me unplug the battery and show you how really clean it becomes as you can see it is now really really clean so what's next next thing that I'm going to do is try to fix the broken shaft of the door hinges or the door hinge and I believe I'm done so let me fix it and we will see what happens so here is the door has been removed and here is the hinges as I told you before here is the the first hinge and there is the second one and how this thing works there is a shaft that it is built in in the uh, molding that it is pressed and it is uh, uh, hold the hinge into this way so the door it moves in these hinges and that is by this arrangement this become a moving hinge so yeah there is no grease in these hinges so it is made so it can uh, deteriorate here is the correct uh, shaft of the hinge and here is the broken one so either I'm going to repair the broken one or I'm going to make a replacement of this we will see what I will come up with I think I'm going to make another shaft yes this is the correct way so yeah let me try to build another shaft and we will see how it is going to turn out so back on its Sony portable radio cast player I managed to drill a hole in the place of the old uh, shaft of the hinge of the door hinge and it turns out the original shaft it was about 3.2 uh, millimeter in diameter and I use this uh, millimeter or a veneer clip in order so I can uh, measure it let me see where is the original shaft is and here is the the piece of the original shaft as you can see if I zero it out and in here it is about 3.2 26 millimeter so I drill a hole using a SS a drill bit and I uh, it was a really hard task to drill this co this hole in this uh, uh, place but I did it and I'm going to use a, uh, a blind rivet in order so I can uh, insert it uh, instead of the original shaft plastic shaft as you can see a rivet it is about three millimeter a this uh, 0 0.26 millimeter it's not going to be a huge deal but I believe this is going to be a really good replacement of the original one 
so let me install this into its place and secure the door into its place and we will see if it is going to work or not and we're back and here is the blind rivet has been installed and I support the rivet into its place into its correct place using some uh, sheets of uh, MDF uh, wood and as you can see it is really re inst installed in a really really nice manner now let's try to open the door as you can see the door it is opening without any kind of effort now yeah all what I have to do now is put some epoxy compound or maybe some uh, hot silicon in order so I can hold uh, the rivet to the body of the uh, of the tape recorder and I believe we have a successful repair Wow Wow so I'm going to pause this video for the last time and apply some adhesive and then we will assemble the entire unit and this is our finished product and I uh, secure the uh, blind rivet to the body of the tape recorder with some uh, hot silicon and as you can see it is solid like a, like a brick and also I reinstall the door spring into its place and as you can see the door it is opening and closing in a really cool way like it should be it is working like it should be so let me just flip it and as you can see the door it is opening and closing like it should be so yeah so all what I have to do now is assemble the entire thing and we will try it on and we will see what happens here is the unit has been completely reassembled and I secure the screws to their places and I tighten them like they should be and if I try to open the uh, tape door it open and closes like it should be so I believe we have now a successful repair so without a further ado let me plug it in and try it on and we will see how it is going to work so here is the power cord and let me plug it in as you can see and let me it is AM and here is FM so the radio it is working like it should be so now let's try the tape section and we will see if it is going to work or not so here we go Okay, let me... So the tape unit it is also working fine like it should be. So I believe my job here it is done and this unit it is ready to be delivered to the owner. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.